God bless you, family of God. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam, a.k.a. your brother, everybody's brother, right here on the Blaze Bible Study, live Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at www.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Amen. And we're here. We're also on the Spreaker Network, um, the Facebook, the Twitter, the MySpace. Uh, we're on the TuneIn app for your Android devices and your Apple devices. And by the grace of God, we're available um, to over 15,000 listeners uh so far on one network, Spreaker, and total on the Soul Winners Network, over 650,000 listeners. So far, so good. God is good, and I'm humbled every time that I look at those numbers grow because I know for sure that people are not just tuning into what I'm saying. People are tuning into the hope and the power of the Word of God um, through Bible studies, through church um, uh, services, uh, through Bible studies midweek from Third Day Worship Center, um, through video series uh, with Dr. Reverend uh, K.E. Holmes. Um, so many people that are on the network that are uh, really dedicated to providing you with what God has given them, which is the Word of God, revelation, truth. And tonight we're going to be talking about salvation. Can anyone get saved? Is salvation available to anyone? That's the question we're going to try to tackle tonight here on The Blaze with your brother Sam. And first, when before I answer that, we're going to pray first. But before I answer that question, is salvation available to anyone? Uh, I'm going to ask you, are you saved? Are you the listener saved right now? Because if you're not saved, this whole question won't even make sense to you. It won't even matter. So we're going to talk about why we need to be saved, number one, and number two, what causes us to be separated from God. So let's take it to prayer to the Lord. There's so many prayer requests that I've seen today online. Amen. Uh, we need we need to pray for healing over cancer to stop that attack of cancer over people's bodies. We need to come against that in the name of Jesus. We need to ask God for the healing hand that only he, when he touches, heals it all. One healing touch of Jesus will heal every circumstance in your life, every sickness, every disease, everything that needs healing. God has a hand that heals. So Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. I come to you praying, um, asking Lord God that you will answer the requests of your people, your sons, your daughters. We are here standing together in prayer by faith right now by your Holy Spirit. There are people being attacked with cancer around the country, around the world, and they know your name and they have recognized you as their personal Lord and Savior. I'm asking Lord Jesus right now that your Holy Spirit, that your hand will touch their lives and touch their bodies physically, emotionally, and spiritually, touch their family members' lives, and that many will see the glorious touch of your healing hand over their hearts, minds, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and the family members of these individuals right now will rise up and pray individually. They will pray together, and they will pray and fast, and they will go into your word and encourage one another with the scriptures about healing, the scriptures about redemption, the scriptures about your miracles, and that all these truths will explode in our minds and remind us of your goodness and remind us of your power and your love and your mercy and your grace. I ask that, Lord Jesus, that you will have your way with every single person who has called upon your name because you are the author and finisher of our faith. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise, and I give you worship right now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. So you know for sure if you're saved or not. How do I know? Because when you're not saved, these messages, these studies won't really matter to you because you're like, I don't know what he's talking about anyway. What is salvation? Well, salvation is someone being rescued from death by an almighty God who loves you. Romans chapter 323 says, for all, that means everyone, sinner, saint, all of us, for all have sinned. And fall short of the glory of God. So each person, each person you know and each person I know is separated. Is separated um, from God because of sin and sinful behavior. Because of sin and sinful behavior. So we're separated. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 says, We all, again all, saints, sinners, we all like sheep 
have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So you see, you can never judge anyone. I can't judge nobody. You can't judge me. I can't judge you. Because only God knows the outcome. Only God knows your heart. So only thing I could judge is use judgment is in the actions of people. But I can't say who's saved and who's not. Because there's an inner job, inner work. It's an inside job. Salvation is an inside job. God sees all of us like sheep. And he's the good shepherd. We know his voice. And he hears our voice. So in order for that to happen, we have to know Jesus as our good shepherd. Because we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us turned to our own ways. Until Jesus steps in and you allow him to do the work that he intended to do since the found, before the foundations of the earth in your life. You were supposed to have a destiny of salvation. God has a plan for your life. And it's called salvation. Sin must be punished. Separation from God means a literal hell. But don't get it twisted. Even in hell, God is there. You know what, what is not there in hell of God, from God? His goodness. His goodness is not, because God is omniscient. God is everywhere. God is all-knowing. God is omnipresent. God is almighty. He's sovereign. Um, man, God is all that. But you won't find his goodness separated from him from all eternity. You won't find his goodness in hell. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is a gift. You can't, get one, you can't get something that wasn't already given to you. In other words, you can't earn a gift. Some people might think they can. Oh, if I do this, that, that, I'll get a gift. Okay, so a man's gift to another man, that's temporary. As a matter of fact, that gift could be taken back. But when God gives a gift, it's for eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So when you're sinning, when you're sinning, when I'm sinning, I'm working for the wages of, of death. But, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So we know that each person is separated from God because of our sin and sinful behavior. We know that sin must be punished. Sin must be punished or else God won't be a just God if he doesn't punish sin. And now we know that there's nothing a person can do. I can't do anything. You can't do anything to gain status with God or to earn merit towards salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God like we saw in Romans 6.23, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. No one can boast. You can't earn your way into salvation. Okay? So let's get to the part, um, this question that I have first. So now you know what we can or cannot do to earn salvation. Amen? Is salvation available to anyone? Well, let's see. In Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, the Bible says... Uh, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in the manger, wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. Jesus was born humbly. Jesus was born in a stable. He was born around ordinary people. He did that so he could powerfully demonstrate that salvation is available to anyone who sincerely seeks him. The message was sent by the angels. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. It was an announcement to who? To just the kings, to just the prophets, to just the government officials, to just the rich? No. That announcement came from angels to anyone who was willing to listen, to anyone in that area, to anyone. So the announcement was to anyone. To anyone. So, uh, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse uh, 11 
We're going to see that in 11. And I saw a great white throne and I saw the one who was sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to the things written in, in the books, according to what they had done. Wow. Salvation is available to all, but a time will come when it will be too late to receive it. Why? Because in Revelation chapter 21, verse 3, um, the Bible says clearly um, in this revelation that... Uh, well, it's not going. To, it's not going there. So let's see. Okay, my computer froze, but you'll see that re uh, in the book of Revelation, you'll see clearly that salvation is available to all. But there's going to be a time, uh, like the day of Noah, when the ark was being built. The ark was built. The flood came, and then people were like, "Let me onto that ark. Let me get into the boat." And Noah shut the door. It was a representation. Uh, it was a prophetic uh, representation or a type of judgment. Because you see, there's going to be a day when the doors of heaven, the doors of salvation is going to close. And when them doors close, that's it. No more. It's uh, Basically, it's a wrap. <laughs> I uh, mean, I don't even know how else to say it, but basically, it's a wrap. Basically, uh, lights out. Basically, no mas. And that's going to be a time uh, where people are going to be like, man, I only wish I had listened to these crazy Christians. Because you see, people think we're crazy. Amen. People think that Christians are crazy. And some Christians are crazy, but uh, a real Christian has... Uh, knowledge wisdom understanding of the scripture amen and we have to respect that if the word of god is live and living in you you have to know for sure that god amen can do what he said he could do he'll do what he said he would do in the word i heard and here it is revelation chapter 21 verse 3 i heard a loud shout from the throne saying look the home of God is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. So there's no doubt about it. There is going to be a day coming. Jesus is coming soon. I know you probably heard that phrase a thousand trillion times from people who preach the gospel, teachers, pastors, prophets. Jesus is coming soon. That's a word. As a matter of fact, the Bible says salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. When I first believed in December 12, 2001, salvation is nearer to me now in 2013. Why? Because every day alive, you know, possibly is closer to my last day. So salvation, the Bible says those who endure to the end shall be saved. Not those who get saved, say a prayer, and go back into the world shall be saved. The Bible don't say that. As a matter of fact, the Bible is against you on um, going back into the things, into your old bondage. Because the Bible says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. So why would God want you to return to your old self and your old bondages and your old pr old prisons? The prison doors have been wide open, broke open. So, yes, the answer is yes. Anyone could be saved. Anyone who listens, anyone who says yes to Jesus, to the word of God. Now, the difficulty of a person from another religion who was born maybe into Islam, who was born maybe into uh, other religions that don't believe as Jesus as God, then it's going to take the work of the Holy Spirit to convince someone of another religion that he is the only one and true God. And only salvation comes only through Jesus and that there's only one who can forgive sins and his name is God, Jehovah, Yahweh, uh, Adonai, the Almighty One. And then God will take care of the rest. I mean, all you can do and all I can do is say what the Word says, live what the Word says, preach out loud and preach your lifestyle in front of many, many people, believers and unbelievers as, uh, alike. Because your, your greatest testimony to someone who is seeking um, the kingdom of God 
when they look at God's people, your greatest testimony will be your lifestyle. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because it can't be perfect because we're not perfect. But what it could be, the Bible wants us to be blameless. We don't want to be the ones to be blamed for somebody falling or somebody backsliding. The Bible teaches that we should be, we are to be blameless, blameless. So we see that if we recognize that there's a problem, God had in place from creation, the very beginning, for a way for an individual to have a personal relationship with himself. This thing was all planned out so that anyone, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord could be saved. Salvation is available to anyone who calls on the name of the Lord. The way was through the death of his son, Jesus Christ. So we recognize that there's a problem. God knew there was going to be a problem, but he had already uh, planned it all out for an individual to have a personal relationship with himself. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love, his own love, not man's love. God demonstrates godly love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whoever believes, see that, whoever believes, not whoever, whosoever, uh, whoever uh, Israelites, like the Israelites like to say, um, it says that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And that that not perish part does not mean that you're not going to die physically. It means that you're not going to be cast out of God's goodness and his presence for eternity, that you will not um, feel the sting of death, that you will be with Jesus Christ forever. So that not perish part is the eternal life. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. I mean, this is like a call out right now, must be saved. God wishes that none should perish, but everyone have everlasting life. But he's never going to force that on anybody. He's not going to force it on you or me or your relatives, an atheist. He's not going to force his way on anyone. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Um, that sounds like it's urgent. That sounds as like urgency in the must be saved part. So each person, you have to make your own decision. Um, each person must repent. That means turn from you were going one way and you, it was your way. And it was either your way or the highway, some people say. And you say, I'm living my life. I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't need God. Some people live that way. And they're traveling and they're going places. Some of them get successful with money and they have talent. They go into the industry, the music business. Um, they record albums, make a lot of money. They're talented in front of a camera. So they make videos um, They on television. They're movie stars, this, that, and a third. Maybe they're bankers. They're successful at, at work and they're making triple digits, salaries. and all. They're still going their own way. They're still going their own way. If, if you don't repent, that means if you don't turn from your own way and turn to God's way, then you won't see that Jesus Christ is the only way to receive God's forgiveness and gain entrance into heaven. You'll live a life on your own, with your own on your own terms. I see this a lot. A lot of people go to God on their terms. They don't go to God on God's terms. They go to God on their terms. God, if you could get me out of this, I'll serve you. And then after God gets them out, well, through his grace, through his, through his love, he knows some people are not genuine, but through his goodness, he'll do things that are good anyway. And then people find themselves backsliding, going right back into the, getting delivered from sickness and disease, getting delivered um, and freed up from a lifetime prison sentence. And they promise God that if they, if they get out of this prison sentence, they'll serve him. They'll serve him for like a week or two. They'll witness to a couple of the people. And then the enemy comes and tempts them with something that um, has to deal with their old nature. And they go right back into sin. What happens to them from there? I don't know. You don't know. I can't judge. But we know that at that point where they let go of God's um, zeal and they let go of receiving God's forgiveness and they let go of all of that, you'll start seeing their lifestyle change back to something that was old when God already gave them something new. So each person has to repent. That's something that 
individuals have to do. You have to turn from the way you're going, your own way, and turn to God's way. There's no other way around it. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. People make me laugh. It's funny. People say, well, aren't we all children of God? No. The scripture teaches that only through this way, through Jesus, only through the one that you believe in, he gives the right for us to become children of God. Uh, we're all created in the image of God. I think that's what a lot of people mean to say. Aren't we all created in the image of God? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. But are we all children of God? Absolutely no. Through Jesus, he's the only one that could make us right with God. Right? First, you have, if you want peace, you have to have peace with God. And then God will give you the peace of God. I'm going to say that again. If you want peace, Jesus Christ will give you peace with God. So you can have the peace of God. And then you'll have the right to be called children of God. John 3 verse 36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. You know, there's religions out there that they, they're not sure. They You ask them, are you sure you're saved? And they, they look at you like, ah, we can't know until it's all over. Which really doesn't make any sense. Because if you're not sure now, how can you be sure when it's all over? doesn't make sense whoever believes in the son has eternal life but whoever rejects the son will not see life for god's wrath remains on him we're born in sin i'm born in sin you were born in sin everyone you know was born into sin everyone you don't know has been born into sin we're born wrong and god came to fix us he came to give us the opportunity um, to cleanse us from all our sins, wipe away our tears, and robe us and clothe us with the righteous robe of Jesus Christ. John 3.36, read it for yourself. So we know we could be sure that we're saved. Once you repent, turn from your own way and turn to God's way, ask God to forgive you for just X in the amount of your life because you want it. You wanted it all. You wanted it all now. You wanted the sex. You wanted the drugs. You wanted the alcohol. You wanted the party life. Amen. You wanted it all. And you wanted to do it your way. You didn't need God. When times were great, when your bank account, your bank account was flossing, you had the car, the job, your health was great, your relationships were all working out, you had everything in plenty. One day God's going to take all of that away, right? Because he loves you and he wants to get your attention. He'll take it all away. Your health might deplete. Your bank account might um, go to zero. Um, no more cars. Your friends leave you and abandon you. Then you come down to your end, the end of yourself. And then you look at yourself in the mirror and say, what just happened? And there's God with his arms wide open and say, I just happened. I got your attention. Follow me. Turn from your wickedness and turn to me the righteousness of God and he'll save you and then you'll definitely ask for forgiveness I, I got saved because I came to the end of myself I was full of myself uh, so I came to the end of myself really rapidly amen it took 30 years I can't really count I can't really say it's 30 years total because from the age of uh, birth to like 5 years old I didn't know what I was doing maybe from 5, 6, 7, 8 I started knowing what was around me and then teenage life, forget it. That was all uh, a blip. It was so fast. It went so fast. And I got sexually active, started um, partying and doing this, this, and that. Then into my mid-20s, I was doing my own thing still until 30 years old when I came to the end of myself. Done it all. Didn't Been there, done that. Looked back and I said, well, uh, I'm still not satisfied. It's, I still feel empty. I'm not fulfilled. Then Jesus called out to him. I was drunk and high and he saved me. He saved me right where I was. He met me right where I was, drunk and high in a studio in Allentown, Pennsylvania, um, practically threatening God that if, if he didn't save me, I'll walk away from him forever. And he did save me. And guess what? I never walked away because I can't get over the fact that Jesus met me where I was. And because he met me where I was, I'm so grateful. And I'm humbled every day. And I thank him every day for saving me and for changing my life. Amen. And salvation is like that. You could be sure of your salvation. First John chapter 5, verse 13 says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know 
K-N-O-W, so you can know that you have eternal life. So if you ask a Christian, if they're Christians, are you saved? And they say yes, and you ask them, are you sure you're saved? They better, they better say what the scripture says. Yeah, I know that I have eternal life. The Bible says that I believe, if you believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, you will be sure, you will know that you have eternal life because Jesus promised it. Jesus said, whosoever calls upon my name shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Why? Because there's no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. We read that earlier. John chapter 5 verse 24. You see, I'm giving you a lot of scriptures. There's a lot of proof in the scriptures of the scripture. The Bible, the Bible itself, the word of God itself proves itself. Amen. You could go to commentaries and get books about the Bible, but the Bible itself proves itself. There's no contradictions like people say. There's no errors like people say in the Bible. There's no add-ons like people say. And if somebody tries to add on to the scripture and it's not inspired or if they find a scripture later on and if it's not expired, yeah, it won't fit. But uh, the Bible's been around how many thousands of years and people still can't say that it doesn't work. And the Bible doesn't work because, you know, the Bible's not true because it works. The Bible works because it's true. Amen. So thousands of years of scrutiny and all this, that, and dirt, and people still trying to figure out the, the Jesus resurrection. They're trying to say it never happened. It's, okay, thousands and thousands of years. With all the technology we have, can't somebody scan the Bible and see all the errors right away and get it on the Bible app and then show the whole world, look, here it says this and here. Why haven't they done it if if there's error in the Bible is phony and salvation is not real? Why haven't they found it? Just a question. John chapter 5 verse 24. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. And will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Death to life. Amen. When God shows up in your life. There's a there's a operation that will take place. He'll transfer everything you knew. From your in your mind. In your, in your brain. He'll transfer that. He'll clean your mind. Renew your mind. And transfer that into your heart. And vice versa. He'll take what you have in your heart. Cleanse your heart. And transfer it into your mind, your brain. Amen. Your thought process. Everything will change. One touch of God will change your life forever. Salvation. Man. Is salvation available to anyone? I believe so. If you're that anyone. If you're a whosoever. If you have a pulse. If you have ears to listen. Eyes to see. If you have a uh, Something going on in your life right now. Amen. If you exist. And you're not saved. Well. Good news is, is this. You can be. The only thing that separates us from a living and loving God. Is our own sin. And sometimes in our sin. We become prideful. And our pride will fall. Because then we don't want nobody. Um, in our lives and our business. But God sees your business. He sees your life anyway. And he knows that without him, you can't do anything. But with God, all things are possible. With men, things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So anyone can be saved. Salvation is available to anyone. The angels came and they said, look, a child is born in Bethlehem. The Messiah, the Savior. Said that to everyone who wanted to listen. No one could deny that the angels came at that time when the Bible was written. They saw the angels. They heard the voice. They saw the baby Jesus. And then they seen his life. And his life played out what the scripture says. How he would live. He lived without sin. He did not sin not even once. Uh, the Bible says that he was born from a virgin. And right there that makes him um, separate from any man that ever lived and ever will live. Because there will be no other birth like that ever. No one will be born from a virgin. No one. Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth. Um, he lived before he was born because he's eternal. And he's available right now waiting at the door of your heart. Amen. Asking you. 
to receive him. I'm asking you to just repent, to turn from your wickedness and turn to him. I want to thank you for hanging with me for this blaze. If you need salvation, call upon the name of Jesus. Admit that you're a sinner. You need to be forgiven for your sins. Believe in these words, the word of God over your life. And then confess that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. God bless you. God keep you. And remember, God is good. Peace. Website which turns anyone into a radio DJ. Log on to Spreaker.com for listening to thousands of radio channels and start creating your own radio today.